So how many people love Lagos? That's weak. How many people really love Lagos? Come on, guys. We want to prove to the world that everyone loves Lagos. So you got to mean it. So how many people really love Lagos? I feel like I'm a lecturer. I'm not here to lecture you. I'm actually here to tell you why everyone should love Lagos. My country of origin is Iran, and we actually have, you could say, a lot of in common with Nigeria. So most people know Iran through images like this. And maybe like this. What I identify with are images like this, this, and this. You wouldn't believe it, right? Likewise, most people have a certain perception of Lagos that looks something like this. And this, and a lot of you are probably more familiar with this. Does this look familiar? However, yeah, it's familiar, right? But those of us who live in Lagos, we know Lagos differently. This is not what we identify with. We know Lagos like this. These are the images that really reflect Lagos. These are the images that we want the world to see. Not to say that I didn't fall victim to the propaganda of the mass media, I did. I mean, especially before coming to Lagos in 2008. I know most of you know, have traveled around the world, so you have different perceptions of different countries. Likewise, I traveled a lot for uh, my before coming to Lagos. And a lot of the countries that I absolutely love, a lot of these cities that I fell in have stigma attached to them. For example, there's countries like Colombia, where it's known for drugs, or Mexico, kidnappings. Serbia has a pretty dark history and we all know Kazakhstan, thanks to Borat. But you never hear scary stories about places like London. You never hear stories about people getting robbed on the street. My mother has been robbed four times while we lived in London. And twice I was actually there to witness it. But you don't hear those stories. You hear about how amazing restaurants, the boutiques, the sites, Big Ben, Kate Middleton. You never hear of the negative side. So before arriving to Lagos, I tried to read some books that would educate me about the culture. I read Purple Hibiscus, Half a Yellow Sun, Graceland, Measuring Time, but they didn't tell me what to expect of Lagos. So even after having read these books, I still had in the back of my mind the image of the 419 scammers and my friends just talking in my ear about how scary Lagos was going to be. None of them had ever been to Lagos. So how do they know? But I was pleasantly surprised when I got here. Scary didn't even cross my mind. So I wasn't 
frightened when I got here. I like Lagos, but I didn't love it. It was a hard city to uncover. It was a hard city to get to know. So I tried to really explore the city some more, but it was quite difficult because everything was hidden behind high walls and barbed wires. So I really had to go out there and explore. And when I would ask people about places to go, they would give me the same repertoire of restaurants, shops, supermarkets. But I thought there has to be more to Lagos than just a handful of places. So I was determined to prove everyone wrong. I was determined to show that there was more to Lagos. So whenever I was driving around Lagos, I would get out of the car and peer through gates, the holes through gates. And if I saw an awning, I think, well, maybe there's a restaurant behind that gate, or maybe there's a nice boutique there. And I started discovering Lagos like that. What I found out was that most Lagosians had no idea what was behind these walls. There were restaurants, there were boutiques, there were spas, all beautiful and very nice places. But Lagosians had gone used to the same places, they were comfortable going to places they knew. They weren't very curious about trying new places. So they would go to the same restaurants. They would shop when they traveled. They never shopped here. No one really cared to explore this mega city. And then there was the issue of standards. A lot of the businesses didn't have any. There was no such thing as customer service, not many business owners spent on design, and when you ordered food that came out bad, you know, you got too bad, sorry, you know, not, not, no, oh, I'm so sorry, please, here's a free meal on us. And when I would ask my friends, why, why is that? Why do people just don't make an effort? they would always say, well, what do you expect? This is Lagos. And that's where the problem was. When you don't expect anything, why should anyone deliver? So I was determined to change that attitude. I was determined to prove that, no, that's not a good enough excuse. And I was determined to see if we could change that attitude. And I realized that it's our fault as customers that go to these places. We don't complain. We have expectations. So they're not really going to make an effort. And there was no competition at the time. And I'm talking about 2008. So then there was really not much uh, competition. So businesses didn't make that much of an effort. My friends hated going out with me. Every time we'd go out, I would complain. They'd be like, oh my God, it's so embarrassing. Can you please just eat your food and stop complaining? I thought it's my right. I'm a paying customer. If my food is out frozen or burnt, I have a right to complain. I'm paying for it. So I accepted the fact that businesses face a lot of challenges especially since the service industry was still developing. But I knew that it was going to change. It's, I could already see the changes. And I knew that if people were given a guide, that that might entice them to explore the city deeper. But I believe I was in Lagos at just the right time. You could say it was my destiny to come to Lagos. I want to tell you a little love story. My journey getting to Lagos was quite adventurous. I had traveled the world, I was single, I was carefree, and I thought, okay, I'm just coming to Lagos for a few months and then I'm gonna jet off somewhere else. But I didn't realize that my temporary visit to Lagos was actually gonna turn into my home. I didn't realize that my real adventure was just beginning. Lagos changed my life. I fell in love in Lagos after just two months of being here. Yes. And four months after that, I was engaged.
Within four years, I went from traveling the world to becoming a mother and an entrepreneur. Lagos is our home now, and it's where I, I look forward to raising my family. So I do owe a lot to Lagos. So you could say I'm in debt to Lagos. But I didn't just fall in love in Lagos. I also fell in love with Lagos. In Lagos. And we needed to be more proactive. So what if we made more noise about Lagos? So I created the platform for them to channel the positive energy and help change the way the world looked at Lagos. But then I got asked, why not I love Lagos? And I thought, well, the problem with human nature is that we think too much about I and not enough about we. And a community is a lot stronger than a single person. Through the movement, I wanted to also create a sense of empowerment, that we all belong to a community, we are all Lagosians. And by doing this, I hope to create a sense of camaraderie, looking out for each other, looking out for Lagos. But we wanted to find fun ways of doing this. We wanted to start a movement that people would want to join and that would not only get the attention of the world, but Lagosians, of people all around Nigeria too. Of course, we started with social media, letting people know about the movement, and we started distributing t-shirts. We even wanted to make the t-shirts fun. So they don't just say, we love Lagos. They have a QR code on them. And the QR code, you can actually scan, and it will take you to our Facebook page. So we wanted to make interactive. So we gave them out to everyone. We had a lot of different people wearing them, from fishermen to polo players. So it really just covered everyone. It included everyone. We wanted to capture the We Love Lagos vibe through these t-shirts. And while doing that, we were showing a little bit of Lagos at the same time. We also gave out bumper stickers. You may have seen them around Lagos. But again, we didn't want to just give them to people. We went out in traffic and we asked people, can we stick these stickers on your cars instead of expecting them to put them on later? So we also had QR codes put around Lagos because again, we wanted the movement to be everywhere. So you might see them in cafes, supermarkets, restaurants, and you can scan them. But something we did that was a little bit different was uh, the We Love Lagos flash mobs. So I'm not sure if you've seen a flash mob, They're just a spontaneous burst of dance in a public place. So we decided to uh, do our own version of uh, a number of different flash mobs around Lagos, including some unconventional places, like the middle of a bridge in traffic. Here's the result. You can play it. Let's imagine some music. I guess it's not really... Uh, we'll keep that as a suspense. As you can see, we try to use different... That wasn't me. <laughs> Location. So this is the bridge. ShopRite or the Palm Shopping Center. We did it at Oniru Beach, at Morio Kondola Park. 
So you'll have to watch it on YouTube to really get the sense of the music. But these are the things we wanted to do. We wanted to make it fun, interactive. We wanted to show people that Lagos is a fun place, that you could do anything here. And everyone is doing everything here. Maybe we can stop the video, actually, since you can't hear the music. So you'll have to catch it on online. We also did it at, uh, actually, we launched the campaign on 1st of April at Lagos Carnival at TBS. So that's the first uh, video that we did. It looks like it's going in super fast mode. <laughs> Soon we hope to hold the We Love Lagos free concert. And the free concert is to really bring together people from different sides of Lagos so that we can celebrate Lagos, we can enjoy Lagos. And we hope to have dance, music, comedy, everything that we love all in one place. And it's going to be completely free so people can come and enjoy and people can see Lagos the way it should really be seen. So the video is just coming to an end. We're running away before people in traffic beat us. So if, thank you. So if everyone believed in this unity, then that positivity would be contagious. And it would reach the international community. Then people would look at Lagos and think what I think, that it is a great city. And over the past five and a half years that I've been here, I've seen these walls go down, I've seen barbed wires go down and signs for shops and restaurants go up, international brands embracing Lagos. Standards have gone up, customer service does exist. The, what do you expect, this is Lagos mantra, it's starting to become a thing of the past. We'll be seeing a lot less of this, and this, and a lot more of this, and this. But it's more than just the city skyline that has changed. Lagosians are proud to live in this mega city. They are proud to call themselves Lagosians. They are proud to say, we love Lagos. And with over 30,000 fans on our Facebook fan page, I think we're on the right track. I challenge all Lagosians to be more active to spread the good news about Lagos and hope people will pay more attention to the reasons why we love Lagos. I'm proud to be a Lagosian. Eko ni Thank you.